Kevin Muno here with the College of Artisans and we're here at Salt Lake Farm in Rancho Santa Fe. Uh, this was an amazing install that we did uh, led by our designer Amy Height. Our project manager was Josh Robinson and uh, here as you can see behind me we installed some annual uh, veggie beds for the client. This is going to be the center for an educational site uh, with the Waldorf School where kids are going to come in and learn how to grow beautiful organic regenerative vegetables. Uh, it's going to be a great training program that we're really excited about and uh, we see a lot of these popping up in this community. Rancho Santa Fe is a beautiful space, very large lots that lend themselves to uh, small-scale agricultural practices. You see a lot of citrus and avocado in the areas. We see it transitioning to these hobby farms, uh, these regenerative agricultural homesteads. Uh, we see a lot of vineyards popping up and uh, our company, Ecology Artisans, is at the forefront of this movement. We want to install many more of these in the Rancho Santa Fe community so people can have access to good, healthy, local, organic vegetables. Here we are in the food forest part of our installation here at Salt Lake Farm. Uh, this was a really fun part of our installation here. We installed a three zoned food forest. So we have low water plants, we have high water plants, and we have sort of mid-level water use plants. Um, in this food forest, we use a lot of nitrogen fixers. We have different levels of plants. We have ground covers. We have shrubs, we have taller canopy layer trees, and that's the whole idea of a food forest is you have uh, different plants that help out the more productive plants. So each one has their phasing and their different heights. Uh, that confuses pests. Uh, it helps with building soil fertility and uh, provides a really unique ecosystem here on this beautiful homestead in Rancho Santa Fe. So we're going to take you on a little bit of a walkthrough through this awesome food forest project that we have here. Um, here's one of the food producing crops that we have here, the tropical species, obviously the banana, um, uh, great tasty fruit. Um, so part of what we want to do in a food forest is, uh, is plant nitrogen fixing species. So this is a mimosa. This is going to take atmospheric nitrogen and fix it into the ground via its root system, which uh, will feed the soil biology and allow uh, food producing crops like the banana which requires lots of nitrogen to take that up. So this mimosa is helping that banana grow a lot more vigorous and produce a lot more fruit. Um, something a bit more interesting to note here is throughout this little banana circle we've planted here we got a lot of sweet potatoes planted which is a nice good ground cover crop. Uh, this will eventually grow out and spread out through this whole banana circle and provide a nice shading on the soil, which is really important in our hot Mediterranean climate. Water is always uh, at, uh, at a premium. So when we can create some nice shade on the soil, it helps uh, reduce the uh, uh, evaporation that we have when rainfall does fall. Uh, kind of coming down a little bit farther uh, into the food forest, you'll see one of our first earthworks that we have here. So we have a series of earthworks that we've uh, uh, developed here. This, this would be called uh, a swale, which is really just a ditch on contour. And you can kind of see how it dips down here and then it berms up. Um, everything's uh, nicely mulched, which is really allowing us to build soil. Again, keep the, the ground covered, reducing evaporation from when rain does fall. Um, but all this water that's harvested in the swale is going to feed this fruit tree right here, uh, providing more uh, available water to that tree which is going to increase its growth and its vigorousness. Um, we have some ground cover plants planted in here as well but we also have a lot of pollinator species and a lot of herbs so you see some lavenders and some yarrows planted in this little uh, circle here. Uh, the pollinator plants are important because they bring in beneficial insects to increase the population so that we get a better fruit set on our fruit trees. So uh, we really like this, this type of setup. Uh, again, it provides a lot of diversity. It works with nature. You're building soil and uh, it's just a good resilient home food production type of model. So uh, as you can see, uh, under this uh, layer of about three to four inches of mulch, 
what we have is a nice, uh, dark, rich, um, bio, biologically active soil. Um, this is kind of what you want to see in your food production landscapes, this uh, really earthy, crumbly sort of black cottage cheese structure. Um, this is full of carbon, which holds on to more water. It's full of bio biology, which is going to help uh, break down minerals and chelate minerals in your soil, which is going to make your, your food more nutritious. And uh, mulching is definitely one of the strategies that we can use in an urban setting uh, to help us uh, by feeding the biological life. It's essentially, mulch is carbon, and carbon is the food for the biology that's in the soil. So when we feed the biology this carbonous rich material, uh, it's going to proliferate and explode, and you're going to get more biology, more minerals, more nutrient cycling in your soil, building a healthier food crop and a healthier person at the end of the day and that's what we're all about uh, at ecology artisans is building these productive vibrant healthy food producing landscapes mm -hmm.